still check the word arthritis in the dictionary, chances are that you will find it to be defined as an inflammation of one or two more joints. Now, is that what arthritis is or there is more to it? We are about to find that out on today's episode of MediClouch. And in the studio with me, I have physiotherapist Ajit Adejugbagbe Muiwa right. Kenneth. Yeah, Thank right. you very much for joining us today. Yes, all mine. Oh, how do you define arthritis? Okay, literally speaking, if you talk about arthritis, arthritis is something that affects the joint. Okay. Now, like for artra, joint, and the height is means inflammation. So if you're looking for the simplest definition, we're talking about inflammation of the joints. Joint. So that's basically, we don't need to start going to some other, but basically it's actually inflammation of the so joint. So it is correct to that's define correct. it as that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is more to it? So how does that happen? I mean, how do the joints get inflamed? So we have like roughly about 200 to about 340 joints in the body. Okay. So as far as there's that connection, over time because of the movement taking grinding. place so there's a kind of grinding and there's mm -hmm. kind of wear and tear you know taking place in the joint so that is where arthritis comes in so most of the time arthritis is a very broad term so when we're talking about arthritis we have like about 200 disease uh, disease conditions that we are talking about oh. now i can start where we have the inflammatory we have classification that we have the inflammatory category okay. we have the degenerative category we have okay. the infection category i get it. we have the traumatic category so it depends on actually what we are talking about. The commonest of all the arthritis, the one that we have, is the osteoarthritis. Now, osteoarthritis is basically a chronic degenerative condition whereby you know, there's a degradation of the articular surface. I'll try to, because we actually get off the joint. Okay. The joint, for it to actually, let me say, move, you know, that's one another or each other, is actually, we have a particular, we call it the cartilage, the articular yeah. cartilage. That is actually the one that helps, you know, with the, the cushion, yeah, the, the effect, cushion, the effect okay. of the movement. But with time, because when you keep doing this over and over, over time, maybe as a result of overweight or as a result of overuse, you see what mm -hmm. gradually it keeps reducing and the smoothness you know, of the articular cartilage actually reduces and that's why you start having a bit of grinding effect and that friction taking place. So you see that instead of that smoothness, now a joint that normally should be able to move your joint, but you get to move the joint and you're hearing some kind of sound. We call that crepitus. So Ooh. that one actually symbolizes that what there is a okay. problem going on in that joint. We, we have a destructive mechanism and we have a repair mechanism. It's just like our skin. We shed, you know, mm. layers of the skin and it, what there's renewal always, you know, a renewal. Yes. So the same thing with the articular surface of the joint. So whenever there's always that destructive mechanism going on, there should be a reparative mechanism to always replace that. But whereby there's a kind of uh, deviation and you know what used to be a kind of check and balance, but that one is already hotter. There's an alteration in that. So that's what results to arthritis. Now for the risk factors, and I'm going to divide it into two. All right. We have the non-modifiable risk factors and we have the modifiable risk factors. Okay. Now for the non-modifiable risk factors, there's nothing you can do about it. Now looking at, uh, let me say, genetic or let me say the hereditary factor, like actually, because for women in the, at the postmenopausal age, we call something the Ebadins node. That's what Ebadins node okay. is something you know present on the gene that mm -hmm. actually predispose women more. Are you getting now to oh. actually developing an osteoarthritis, most likely at the postmenopausal age? Oh. Are you getting now compared to let me say men? I'm talking about the modifiable risk factors, smoking. We thought about obesity, like the BMI. If the mm, body mass sure. index, are you getting now? It's very much turning towards the overweight and towards obesity. It can actually produce, okay, part of the enough modifiable risk factors. Age. I forgot, age is very, very yes. important. Yes. Because as you keep aging, definitely the rate at which the body gets to repair is very much reduced. Mm. So that's one. So the gene is there, the genetic predisposition is there. We talk about gender Benji, and we talk gender, about yeah. age. So that's for the non-modifiable. Non now we talk about now for the modifiable things that we can actually do. Mm. Like a sedentary lifestyle. So that's why I would not ah. totally agree with the way you talked about it. Will exercise actually predispose someone? No. Sedentary lifestyle can actually get to predispose one to developing mm. arthritis very early. Now, it's okay. Since I'm trying to actually protect the joint, I don't want to move as much as possible. <laughs> I tell you, when you, that moment of you just staying put and not it's doing anything, they cause something synovial stasis. Because there's a particular lubricant that actually gets lubricated the, field, the joint. The that, you know, it nourishes it, it lubricates it, it reduces the frictional forces between the two articular surfaces. So when you actually keep static and you're not moving, so definitely it becomes static, so that, means that lubrication is naturally ongoing well. Mm. So that's another thing. That, and again, diet. Diet too also sure. have a role to play in this particular, uh, let me say that, part of the risk factors that we are looking at. Wow. And again, another thing. Okay. Estrogen. Really? Now, it, it looks quite very interesting. Yeah, estrogen can actually get a play. And that's where the issue of postmenopausal, or let me say mm. perimenopausal women. 
Now, when it's actually get because there's a reduction, I get on the level of estrogen the body. So that's mm -hmm. what makes the bones to be a bit weaker, you know, yeah. osteoporosis right. or osteopenia, whereby this, you know, the calcium density, you know, the mineral density of the bones actually tends to very much reduce. Mm. So that's another thing. Now that we've identified the non-modifiable and the modifiable, what mm. can be done about, about it? So we have the pharmacological intervention and we have the non-pharmacological intervention and we also have surgical. But the surgery is always the last resort we always go to at the end of everything. Okay. Now, if you're talking about arthritis, number one is, let's say we look at the prevention because no, ah. that's talking about no, the non modified It's not until when you actually develop this. That's when you now, okay, start running it as schedule to try to fix it. But there are some things that we can actually get to do, okay. you know, to prevent. And that is just <clears throat> to, to combat every of all these, the, the modifiable risk factors. Okay. Looking at diet, working on one's weight, you know, try to keep yourself within, that you know, the, the, the normal weight and try to make sure that what you are fine, you are physically fit. Exercises is very, very mm. important. Okay. Another thing again is, if you have any injury or any form of trauma, trauma whatsoever to around the joint, the joint mm. like a sprain, a ligamental sprain, or what I'm saying is it's a meniscal tear, it is very, very paramount that you actually take care of that particular injury. And again, prolonged immobilization. So the best thing that we always get to converse for is why don't you just tackle where the problem is instead of you just taking your pharmacological you know, drugs okay. to take care of the whole thing. So we always advocate for physiotherapy. Yes. And physiotherapy is actually very much simple. Now, okay, I, what did we didn't mention this. The, the, the symptoms that comes with osteoarthritis. Yeah. You know, we talked about stiffness of the joint. Early morning stiffness. You know, whenever they actually get to wake up in the morning, it's always very difficult. You see that they cannot even move or flex the knee. Oh. So one thing we get to the word, physiotherapy, we always try to use whether thermotherapy or cryotherapy, depending on what actually works best for this patient. Mm -hmm. Now, pain. We have quite a lot of things that we actually use for pain. We use the TENS therapy, that is the transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation. What is that? Oh, no, no. <laughs> uh, okay, can I get kind of, let me say, a simpler definition for that, but okay. it's just basically like, we, we try to use this kind of pain gauge theory, okay. you know, model to actually take care of the pain. Right. You know, it's like you are attacking it right from the root, so that's actually what, we have uh, shortwave diatomy, we have microwave diatomy, these are some kind of big devices that we actually use in taking care of. And again, strengthening exercises, mm. bicycle ergometry, uh, uh, bicycle ergometry like using of bicycle ergometer, that's stationary bicycle. You know, as you keep moving, and this way you can actually get to increase, you know, the resistance. It helps to strengthen, you know, strengthen the muscles globally, and at the same time to also promote, you know, the flexibility of the joint. How about just running? Running, 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 running. I would actually prefer you go for brisk walking. So sometimes even occupational and occupational exposure to also predispose one, you know, predispose an individual to even developing arthritis. Because don't forget overuse, again, mm. and overweight. Those two are very, very much important in development of arthritis. So wow. your footwear is very, very important. So we try to admonish. Why don't you just go for a soft, something that will take off that cushion, you know, so that's not, something that will give you that cushion whenever you're walking, you know, that will mm. relieve that pressure on your joint. Osteoarthritis can actually affect a lot of things. It affects, the commonest is always the knee because the knee joint is the biggest and the largest of all joints, oh. followed by the hips, and even the back, the one that we talk about back pain, spondyloarthropathies, spondylolysis, but they are all examples of osteoarthritis. Wow. So I get to know, so all this kind of terrible movement that we get to do in our sitting, and all this bending, rep, and, you know, lifting, and lifting heavy, heavy things, objects, you know, in, in the without roadway. maintaining, you know, proper biomechanics. These are the things that can actually predispose one to developing arthritis. Oh, I have this influx. I feel like if you can just open my head right now, you see how much that I've learned. Wow, it's been quite the interesting conversation and intense too. Thank you yeah. so much. I've learned and I hope that someone out there has gotten more than one thing because it is very, very important. You know, a lot of things I would do day to day that sort of predispose us to this.